checkpoint. Now, in the last census, Tali, about eight months ago, you were probably asked by the enumerators which religion you belong to. And whereas the results of the 2019 population census are not yet out, there's no doubt a majority of Kenya's population identify as Christians. However, in the 2014 demographic survey, about 1.4 million Kenyans were said to have no religion, and it is often believed that a majority of that number claim to be atheists. Tonight, KTN's Timothy Otieno shares the story of this demographic of Kenyans who have many times been castigated, misunderstood, and even called devil worshippers. Who are they? What do they stand for? And most importantly, why are they so vehemently advocating against religion in Kenya? Here's our special report against all gods. <laughs> Many have come out to declare war against a higher being. The Bible is almost certainly a myth. They say there is no God. We want the word God removed from the national anthem. And the stigma has been stifling. People look at you as a devil worshiper. I think I've been called basically evil. It's a face-off of the fates with bold and brazen intentions. If you believe in a God, you are actually deluded. Fools say there is no God. Were they created from nothing or did they create themselves? The All Saints Cathedral, one of the oldest religious institutions in the country, and it is from here where hundreds upon hundreds of Christian faithful gather every Sunday for their weekly prayer service. Just part of the over 10 million Kenyans who profess the Christian faith. But this story is not about the Christians. It's about those who choose to remain at home on Sunday simply because they believe Sunday is a day just like any other. Saints Cathedral is 102 years old and it is perhaps the country's most outstanding symbol of Christianity, especially for those who identify as Anglicans. Built on an English Gothic style, the church has for more than a century been a prayer house, a home, a sanctuary for many believers who find solace and security at the house of the Lord. Its structure has stood the test of time, and perhaps its significance hasn't. It's a typical Sunday morning at the residence of Harrison Mumia. His day begins just like any other, breakfast and then relaxation. The young man is unapologetic about how he chooses to live his life. I think I've been called basically evil. I mean, I think people have said that I'm um, advancing an evil agenda for the country. An evil agenda for the country because Harrison believes that there is no God. There's something wrong with religion. And the position of the atheist is that there is no God. And if you believe in a God, you are actually deluded. You're, you're, you're a person who... Um, either has been indoctrinated when you were young, or you have not critically thought about the issue of God, or you're just scared of heaven, of not going to heaven and hell. You see, before he invited us to his Nairobi home, Harrison had made headlines and inadvertently been at crosshairs with religious leaders in Kenya after he successfully managed to register his organization of non-believers, the Atheist in Kenya group, as soon as we received the certificate, we were very happy. We actually held a, a party, which we were calling a godless party. But the party 
did not last long. The intention of these evil people is clear, to create animosity between Christians and Muslims in this country. We should never succumb to this temptation, for evil can only be overcome by good. Kenya acknowledges their discord, so we do not have good. Following widespread outrage from the clergy and the public, then Attorney General Gidhu Muigai, together with the Registrar of Societies Mukulu Karioki, revoked the society's registration, stating, quote, I wish to withdraw the registration of atheists in Kenya following concerns relating to the society's advocacy and public pronouncements, which have generated great public concern which is prejudicial and incompatible with the peace, stability, and good order of the Republic of Kenya. So in regards to that statement, do you believe that the Office of the Attorney General views you as a threat to security and stability in Kenya? I think um, uh, this idea that public pronouncements are likely to cause a breach of peace is superfluous, which means that um, it's neither here nor there. But indeed, the group has made controversial declarations. For instance, atheists want the government to scrap off the study of religious education in schools, saying it discriminates against children of those who say God is fiction. What we want is um, we should come up with one subject. This subject can be called religious studies, not, not Islamic religious studies, not Christian religious studies, not Hindu religious studies. Just call it religious studies. In this subject, introduce all the religions that um, we know right now, but also go back to the African religions because if truth be spoken, before these religions came to Africa, we had our own religions, and yet we don't even talk about them. Why do they bring up the argument of scrapping off these religious studies we, the Muslims, we say Islam is our religion. Christians, they call it their religion. Hindus, they call it their religion. Then what does it bother them? There is no room in our education system for atheists, as it is now. There is no room in our uh, society for them to champion their rights in a manner that offends other people's freedoms. But to the extent that they uphold these values on their own and they believe in them, that there is no God, they, and they do it among adults, I think they have a right to do it. But it is not only adults involved. Four and a half year old Mason is just about to enroll into school, but his parents are not of the opinion that he should be taught about religion while in school. I think it's important that our children get to understand use of logic, reason. If they hold even their belief, they are understanding of what they believe in, not just believing because they want to believe. I have no intentions of indoctrinating him in anything. One, there is no such a thing as uh, an atheist creed, so I can't indoctrinate him in that. But I do, I would rather prefer that he asks, is able to ask any question he wants, he's able to get either to be given the answers or to find out the answers for himself. And nobody is ever going to look at anything he says or does to find the answers as necessarily bad or good. But why are atheists against religious studies? What then do they stand for? And most importantly, what makes them non-believers? For counselling psychologist Dr. Robert Osoro, Atheists are born out of a traumatic experience. There must be a reason that a trigger, that which has triggered that person to make a decision. Any decision that which is made, uh, psychologically, there must be a trigger that has made that person to make a decision. What are some of these things that would trigger somebody who's been raised in Christianity? 
to lose the faith and then choose a secular life? I think uh, one is, uh, you know, with the challenges we have and ups and downs, that we make one believe that if there is God, I cannot pass through all this because God will not allow me to go all through this. Oh, thank you. For Brenda Jepkorir, what Dr. Robert calls a trigger is more or less a revelation that made her question a lot of what she read in the Bible while in high school. For me, as a Catholic, when I interpreted it, it was like Mary was the one person who could really assist me reach to Jesus and all that. But there are people who are looking like I'm worshipping the devil, like it's, it's idol worship to worship uh, Mary. And that, that would really be disturbing. In fact, I became an SDA for a while and read all those, the great controversy and National Sunday law just to try and find out where is this really truth, where the truth really is. But reading the Bible never truly gave full closure to Brenda. The 31-year-old mother of one is now a staunch atheist who says morality is defined by conscience rather than religion. Do you believe the Bible is a myth? Yes, I would say that the Bible does not give me facts. It's just yeah, a mythological story. It's a statement that would make this man cringe. Jackson Olesapit is a man who has dedicated nearly three decades of his life to serving the Lord. A diligent servant who rose to the helm of the Anglican Church in Kenya on the 3rd of July 2016, becoming the sixth Archbishop of the Anglican Church. I ask him of his thoughts about atheists, to which he points me to a Bible verse. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good, is what Psalms chapter 14 verse 1 states. I think uh, the atheist group in Kenya are just looking for, for me it is just like a cheap publicity to be known by fighting the existence of God, because that is something you can't fight. You can't fight the existence of God, according to me. And I don't think they, 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 they believe even in themselves that that is a war they are going to win. They can't. Uh, people have opposed religion uh, as, 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 as old as history and mankind, but they have never won the war. I think this is one of the verses of the Bible that uh, tries to ensure that if you don't believe in the book, the Bible itself, then there's something wrong with you. And this is how religion has managed to entrench itself in the history of humanity, by trying to make those who don't believe in that religion to look like there's something wrong with them. So uh, Psalms 14.1 is one of the Bibles which I would pinpoint as a segregationist kind of verse. It's a statement shared by those who belong to the second largest religious group in Kenya. For Ustad Ratib, the Quran couldn't be any more clearer when it comes to addressing non-believers. We have Quran chapter 52 verse 35, whereby the Creator is asking, uh, were they created from nothing or did they create themselves? The question really should be, do you think we were created? Because as, as far as I can see, we don't seem to have been created. We don't, to be created we must have a purpose for something, which uh, the Bible gives its own, the Quran gives its own. And there would be some evidence to show whether the Creator would talk to his people in a manner that is clear. Do you ever think of the afterlife? No, 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 no. It has never bothered. You, you'll go uh, when your time on earth comes to an end. Um, I think I'll go to the same place you will go, uh, which is uh, that I'll be buried. And probably I'll be buried. Eh? Well, I, I believe I'll go to some heaven. Yeah, that, that's a belief, and that is a belief that has no evidence because we know nobody who has ever come back from the afterlife. Even Jesus did not come back from the afterlife. I mean, if he actually existed. One of the world's most renowned atheists, Richard Dawkins, was coincidentally born here in Nairobi 
on the 26th of March 1941. Dawkins has authored a book titled The God Delusion, in which he contends that the chances of there being a superior creator is slim to none. In his book, Dawkins argues that religious faith is nothing but just a delusion.